Indian Army and JNK police foiled an infiltration attempt along the LOC in Gurez, Bundipura, killing two terrorists under Operation Nashirinar 4. Acting on intelligence, troops engaged the infiltrators in a brief firefight. A search operation is underway to ensure no further threats remain in the area. The Indian Army deployed its newly inducted Aider N-1200 Specialist Mobility Vehicle in flood-hit Amritsar to rescue stranded villagers. This amphibious, all-terrain vehicle can operate on land, water, snow and deserts, carry heavy loads, tow equipment, and endure extreme climates, making it vital for disaster relief and high-altitude military operations. DRDO's AD has invited bids to develop a siloxane-based plasma polymer coating for Tejas aircraft canopies and windshields. The Transparent Conducting Coating, TCC, aims to reduce radar visibility and enhance optical performance. Vendors must deliver coated panels, test results, and scalable processes, with bids due by October 6, 2025. The Indian Army plans to acquire 12 more AH-64E Apache attack helicopters, raising its fleet to around 40 under direct control. Combined with indigenous LCH Prachhand and Rudra WSI, the Army aims for over 150 attack helicopters. This modernization boosts close air support, anti-tank missions, and high-altitude combat readiness. The Indian Navy plans to arm all frontline warships with BrahMos supersonic missiles by 2030, boosting strike power in the Indo-Pacific. Already deployed on 14 stealth frigates, BrahMos offers speed, precision, and versatility. With expanding frigate and destroyer fleets, this move ensures stronger deterrence and maritime dominance against regional threats. The Indian Army has issued an RFP to procure 30 passive surveillance suite and detection systems under the by Indian category. These state-of-the-art system designed to detect, intercept, locate, identify, and track both active and passive targets, including aerial and ground threats, without emitting signals that could reveal its position. The move supports Atmanurbar Bharat while enhancing border security against China and Pakistan. At RAN Samvad 2025, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh emphasized India's peaceful stance yet firm resolve to defend its land amid evolving geopolitical challenges. He highlighted unpredictability of modern warfare, importance of technology, self-reliance, and proactive strategy. Singh cited Operation Sindor as proof of India's capabilities while urging whole-of-nation preparedness. Sales supplied 8,000 tons of critical-grade steel for the Indian Navy's advanced frigates, INS Yudagiri and INS Himgiri, commissioned in Visakhapatnam under Project 17A. The move boosts Atmanurbar Bharat by reducing import dependence. Sale has also supplied steel for other key warships, strengthening India's defense self-reliance and naval capabilities. After the U.S. imposed steep 50% tariffs, India is targeting 40 key markets like Germany, UK, Japan, and UAE to boost textile exports. The sector, employing 45 million people, faces major risks with U.S. duties making Indian goods 30-35% to costlier. India seeks diversification to cut reliance and protect jobs. Former Army Aviation Chief Lieutenant Gen Ajay Kumar Suri revealed the Indian Army has shelved plans for its own fixed-wing transport fleet, a shift from its earlier push 10 to 15 years ago. The Army will instead rely on the IF for transport, focusing on helicopters and inter-service coordination to optimize resources. Marking National Space Day Ambassador Vinay Kumar invited Russian companies to invest in India's booming space industry, backed by government incentives. He highlighted decades of Indo-Russian space cooperation, 
From Aryabhata's 1975 launch to Giganyan, celebrations also recalled Chandrayaan 3's rover landing and featured cultural performances by students in Moscow. India's Sudarshan Chakra program aims to develop space-based interceptors to destroy enemy ballistic missiles in their boost phase, ensuring higher kill probability and countering MIRVs. Using satellite-based sensors, advanced kill vehicles, and integration with DRDO's missile defense systems, the project could rival global programs, with Phase 1 targeted for 2028-29. India's space sector promoter Ion Space facilitated the transfer of five ISRO developed technologies to Indian companies, reducing import dependence and promoting self reliance. Applications span biomedical, solar, aerospace, and manufacturing sectors. Firms like Voltix, Crest Resins, Azista, Ananth, and Pushpuck Aerospace will now produce these technologies locally, strengthening India's space ecosystem and boosting industrial innovation. Bengaluru's Pixel Space launched three Firefly satellites aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9, completing the first phase of its six-satellite hyperspectral constellation for advanced Earth imaging. Hyderabad's Drua Space launched its first commercial Leap 01 satellite carrying Australian payloads. Together, the missions mark a major leap in India's private space sector and global partnerships. DRDO's Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, is developing the AMCA MK2, India's fifth-generation stealth fighter, with an advanced AI autopilot called ePilot. Initially designed to assist pilots, ePilot has evolved to enable autonomous takeoffs, landings, and potentially full combat missions. Unlike traditional drones, it combines manned and unmanned capabilities, allowing the AMCA to operate independently or under pilot command. Using advanced sensors, machine learning, and secure networks, it can plan missions, adapt in real time, and engage high-value targets with weapons like Astra MK2 and Brahmos NG. The first AMCA prototype is expected in 2026, with induction planned by 2032 to 2035. That's all from YKS Team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.